Okay, class, we're starting Unit 3, Fractions, Part 2. Let's start. Section A, adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. If two fractions have the same denominator, add or subtract the numerators and keep the denominators the same. Reduce the answer to lowest terms and change to a mixed number if appropriate. Okay, now we know denominator means the bottom of the fraction. You notice here that we have the same denominator, so we carry that over. And then now we subtract the numerators. 5 minus 1 is 4. Now 4 and 6 both has 2 in common, so we would divide the numerator and denominator by 2, and that would give us 2 thirds. Now, we come over here to the second problem. We have addition. We have the same denominator, so we carry the denominator over, and we add our numerator. 7 plus 13 is 20, plus 4 is 24. Now, with 24 and 16, we know that 8 goes into both of these evenly. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So we have 3 halves. We could change this to a mixed number. So we would take 2 and a 3. 2 goes into 3 once. We have 3 minus 2, which is 1, so we have a remainder of 1. So our final answer would be 1, because we know the number in front of the remainder is the whole number. Our denominator will remain 2, and our remainder is 1. So it's 1 and 1 half. Now we go to section B, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. If the fractions have different denominators, it is necessary to find equivalent fractions with the same denominator before you can add or subtract. Try to find the lowest common denominator, which is the smallest number that is a multiple of both, both denominators. However, if you can't find anything smaller, remember that multiplying the two denominators always gives a common denominator. If it is not the LCD, you will simply have to reduce more at the end. Multiply each fraction by a form of one, same number top and bottom, to get equivalent fractions with the common denominator. Add or subtract the numerators, keeping the common denominator the same. Reduce and change answer to a mixed number as needed. Okay, so now we're going to follow these steps to solve these problems. Now, one thing I want to do is this here, because Sometimes we can't think of the uh, least common denominator on every problem. There is a process for that, but that's not being taught at this present moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put CD up top as well. Just in case we may decide to multiply the denominators together and just get a common denominator. Okay, now we have 9 and 6. The least common denominator of 9 and 6 we know is 18. So, we could do this. In order to find the numbers that we would have to multiply 2 ninths and 1 6 by to get a denominator of 18, this is how we could do it. We could take our new common denominator and divide it by the original. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So, we will multiply 2 ninths by 2 over 2. Now, we repeat the process with 1 6. We would take 18 divided by 6 is 3. So we'll multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. Now, we'll multiply 2 times 2 is 4. 9 times 2 is 18. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 3 is 3. Now we have our common denominator, which is 18. And we will subtract our numerator. 4 minus 3 is 1. So it's 1 over 18 is the final answer. So... The common denominator of 5 and 3, or the least common denominator, we know is 15. And we could do the same thing we did in the previous problem here. We could take 15 divided by 5, which would give us 3. So we'll multiply 3 fifths by 3 over 3. We could take 15 divided by 3, which is 5, and multiply the numerator and denominator by 5. Now, we'll multiply straight across. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 3 is 15. And we would take 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Now we can add these fractions together, and that would give you 19 over 15. Now we know we cannot simplify this any further, 
Well, we need to change this to a mixed number because it's an improper fraction. So we could go up here where we have a little space and take 15 into 19. 15 goes into 19 once. 19 minus 15 is 4. So we will have a remainder of 4. And our final answer would be 1 and 4 fifteenths. Now, we scroll down here to the next problem. Now, with this next problem, I want to try the multiplying the denominators. Okay, so now, we will multiply 4 times 12, which gives us 48. This would be our common denominator. We don't know if it's the lowest common denominator. We, we do know that it is a common denominator. So we took 4 times 12 and made both our denominators 48. Now, what we need to do to find our numerator is this here. We could actually go off to the side. As a matter of fact, let me rewrite this. I want us to stay consistent. So we had 3 fourths minus 5 twelfths. Okay, so what happens is this here. We will multiply our denominators. 4 times 12 is 48. So we know our denominator is going to be 48. So we will bring 48 over. Now, what we need to do in order to find out what we will multiply this numerator and denominator by is do what we did in the previous problems. We will take the new denominator divided by the old denominator. 48 divided by 4 is 12. So we'll multiply our numerator and denominator by 12. And we have 3 times 12, which is 36. Now we come here. We would take 48 divided by 12, which is 4. And we'll multiply our numerator and denominator by 4. So 5 times 4, we know is 20. So now we have 36 over 48 minus 20 over 48. 36 minus 20 is 16 all over 48. Now we can simplify this. 16 and 48 both has 8 in common. So we would have 16 divided by 8 is 2. 48 divided by 8 is 6. But you notice here we can still simplify this by dividing both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So your answer here is 1 third. Now we come to the next problem, 3 eighths plus 3 tenths. Now we ask ourselves here, we could say we could multiply the denominators and do this process we did over here, or we could find the LCD. Now the least common denominator of 8 and 10 is actually 40. So we could do LCD is 40. So we could write this problem, 3 eighths plus 3 tenths. And now we're going to multiply by some value. So now we say 40 divided by 8, we know is 5. So we'll multiply this numerator and denominator by 5. 40 divided by 10 is 4. So we'll multiply this numerator and denominator by 4. So now we multiply straight across. 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times 5 is 40. Bring our plus down here. 3 times 4 is 12. And 10 times 4 is 40. Now we add them. We have 15 over 40 plus 12 over 40, which will give us 27 over 40. And we cannot simplify this any anymore. So now we scroll down here. We come to perimeter. The perimeter of an object is the distance around it. You can find the perimeter by adding the lengths of all the sides. Find the perimeter of the rectangle shown below. Now remember, one of the properties of a rectangle is, is that opposite sides are equal to each other or opposite sides are congruent. So that means that this side here must be 7 over 20. And this other side here must be 11 over 20. So now to do the perimeter, we just add all the sides. We have 7 over 20 inches plus 11 over 20 inches plus 7 over 20 inches, plus 11 over 20 inches. So now all of them have the same denominator of 20. So we'll write our denominator of 20, 
and now we will add our numerator. 7 plus 11 is 18, plus 7 is 25, plus 11 is 36. Now 36 and 20, we can simplify those by dividing both by 4, and that would give us 9 fifths. Now we can make this into a mixed number, so we would take 5 into 9, 5 goes into 9 once, and then we would have a remainder of 4. So now our final answer, our perimeter would be 1 4 fifths inches. And that is our final answer. Now, we come here to number two. It says a fruit punch is comprised of four different ingredients. Apple juice makes up one-fourth of the punch, grape juice one-sixth of the punch, and cranberry juice one-third of the punch. The rest of the punch is ginger ale. What fraction of the punch is ginger ale? So this is what we would need to do. The first thing is this here. We would need to add up all of these fractions. So we would take 1 fourth plus 1 sixth plus 1 third. Okay, now we need to find the uh, common denominator. Now what I would suggest is instead of trying to do it for all three at the same time, why not just do it for two at a time? We might be able to find something. So let's do this. Let's look at one-fourth and one-sixth. The common denominator of one-fourth and one-sixth we know is 12. So we could go off to the side. One-fourth plus one-sixth. We know our common denominator is 12. So we know we will have to multiply this numerator and denominator by 3. And we will have to multiply this numerator and denominator by 2. So we will have 3 over 12 plus 2 over 12. 3 twelfths plus 2 twelfths, we know is 5 twelfths. Now, we will have 5 twelfths plus 1 third. Now with this here, the common denominator of 12 and 3, we know also is 12. So we could go off to the side here and have 1 third plus 5 twelfths. And we know our common denominator is 12. So we know we would divide our denominator. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator both by 4. And we know 12 divided by 12 is 1. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by 1. So this would give us 4 twelfths, and this would give us 5 twelfths. And they're added together. 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths is 9 twelfths. Okay, now, this right here equals to 9 twelfths. Now we have 9 twelfths. We can simplify this by dividing the numerator and denominator by 3. And this is 3 fourths. Now, before we go on in this problem, let's recap what we did. We first added the first two fractions, found out that their common denominator was 12, and we took 12 divided by 4, which gave us 3, so we multiplied by 3 over 3, and then we took 12 divided by 6, which gave us 2, and we multiplied by 2 over 2. And then we added the results together, and so we had 5 twelfths plus the remaining one third. So we went off to the side here and took 1 third plus 5 twelfths. And we know that the common denominator 3 and 12 is 12. 12 divided by 3 gave us 4, so we have 4 over 4. 12 divided by 12 is 1, so we have 1 over 1. And we multiply, and we will have 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths, which is 9 twelfths. And we came here and simplified. We divided the numerator and denominator by 3, and that gave us 3 fourths. Now, we, wanted, we want to know this. It says the rest of the punch is ginger ale. What fraction of the punch is ginger ale? So what ends up happening here is this. We had three-fourths left over. So we want to take three-fourths from the whole. So we would end up with one minus three-fourths. Now, this one, we could change this one to be four over four. So we have four-fourths minus three-fourths, which is one-fourth. So one-fourth is ginger ale and that 
is the final answer here. 